ABC Kinder Teach presents Cheyenne Again, written by Eve Bunting, illustrated by Irving Toddy. A long, long time ago, Native American kids were taken away from their moms and dads and sent or forced to go to schools that were a long ways away, so far away that they could not come back to visit their moms and dads. And at these schools, they taught them things that white people knew, but they also told them that the things that they knew were not good, they were bad things, and that they should forget all about them, which is not very nice. One day he comes, the man who counts. This is the person who keeps track of how many Native Americans there are and where they are at and how many kids they have and their age of their kids and says, a boy aged 10, he has to go. And when he comes again, he has with him the tall policeman in his white man's clothes, which means he's wearing clothes that are not like the Native Americans. The one called taking man. So the policeman is called the taking man because he's the one who comes and takes away the children and sends them to a school that's far, far away, so far that the parents can't visit, the mom and dads can't visit. He wears the hat and spurs, and there's spurs at the back. They use that to get the horses to run faster. The gleaming or shiny silver badge that mark his work. His work is taking the kids away from their parents. Run, run, run fast, my mother tells me. Hide. But no, my father says, young bull must leave. Now is the white man's world. He needs to learn the white man's ways. The corn is drying out, which means it's maybe not have enough food for them, I guess. There will be food in this place they call school. Young bull must go. And so they walk me to the train. The man who counts and taking man, the policeman. You will speak English, said taking man. It will be better so. He shines his shining badge. I do not want to be like him. This is the sleeping room, they tell me at the school. And the sleeping room is a place where the children sleep. They also call it a dormitory, they tell me at the school. So bare a place, which means all it has in it is beds, not, nothing else. The beds in rows, no huddle of my brothers warm around. And that just means they cannot, he cannot crowd together with other people that he knows to keep warm. No smell of smoke, no robe spread on the ground. I will be lonely here. They take away my buckskins and my shirt, the deerskin moccasins my mother made. They cut my braids, give me a uniform of scratchy wool, the color of an ashen or gray sky with buttons to the neck. No more Cheyenne, they say. You have lost nothing of value. You will be like us. So they're telling him that uh, you're not going to be an, uh, an Indian or Native American anymore or Cheyenne. You, it's no big deal. You're not missing anything. And so that's really, again, a mean thing for them to say. And a Cheyenne is a person from the Cheyenne Indian Nation. This is what buckskins might look like. This is what his moccasins might have looked like. And this is his uniform that he's wearing. And they cut off his hair and make it short, which is, they don't really want to do that. The, the children don't want that done, but they say, oh, you need to do that because that's what needs to be done. And it doesn't, it does not need to be done. I learned geography, the study of people and places, arithmetic or math, and writing in the English tongue or learning how to speak English. The history of their United States, and by that they're talking about the stories of the past, 
but only the stories that the white men want to be told, not the stories the Native Americans know. I look, but in the book I cannot see the victory of greasy grass where General Custer and his men attacked our brave Cheyenne and Sioux. Sioux is another type of Indian nation. It does not tell how we defeated them or won and counted coup, which means did something great, and left the dead asleep beside the river there. My people speak of this with so much pride. They feel good about it, but the book leaves it unsaid, which means the book doesn't say anything about it. Attend your lessons. Do not sit and dream, the teacher says. And attend just means work on your lessons, pay attention to. You want to be dumb Indian all your life? I tossed my head. So they're being really, really mean to this boy and all the other kids at the school are saying, oh, because you're a Native American that you're not very smart, which is not a nice thing to say and it's not true. The bugle calls us to dinner and to work. And that's what a bugle looks like. There's carpentry or working with wood. So we who lived in teepees can repair the wooden buildings where we sleep and shed our tears. And of course there are some teepees. And when they say shed our tears, that just means where they cry. We drill like soldiers, which means they practice like soldiers. And we march to keep us out of mischief or trouble, so they say. We march in boots that hurt our feet, so used to softness, so they're used to the soft moccasins, not to the boots that hurt their feet. Go to church, learn of the white man's God and of his love. We never speak Cheyenne, that's their language, or talk of the great spirit. It's the God the Cheyenne believed in, the one who raised us in this land. The Indian in us must disappear, they say. It must be tamed. What they're really saying is you need to act like white people and not like Native Americans. Again, that's not a very nice thing for them to do. At night I hear the train. I hear the rain and cry for home. One time, the time of the cold moon, and the cold moon is around Christmas time when there's a full moon, I run away. The snow is deep. I have no horse, no food to take with me. I only have the stone my mother gave me once, a stone that wears the scar of wind and rain. And that's just a rock that's been outside for a long time and still is strong. I hold it fast to give me strength. A blizzard roars across the plains and catches me so I can run no more. And when they say a blizzard roars across the plains, it just means that there was a bad s snowstorm in a place with not many trees. The trackers, the people who find the children that run away, find me there and bring me back. The school will pay $5 cash for any runaway. So if one of these kids runs away, these people will go in and hunt them down and bring them back and then they'll give them $5. They lock a ball and chain around my ankle. And you see there, there's a ball and chain so that, that that's meant so that he won't run away again. It's a very, very mean thing to do. They lock a ball and chain around my ankle for one day. We must have discipline, which means they must teach the children be, to behave, they say. There's one teacher here I like. Our world is changing fast, she says. We all must change. I think you will be glad some day of what you've learned, though it was hard. She gives me salve, which is like lotion, to soothe or make it hurt less. The place the chain has rubbed against his leg. Never forget that you are Indian inside. Don't let us take those memories. So the teacher says to him, it's probably good that you learn some of the things that white people know, but also don't forget the things that 
Native Americans know as well, that, because those are important as well. So she says both of them are important. That's what she's trying to tell him. I draw on paper that is lined, torn from my ledger book. And a ledger book is just a notebook. Across the page, two warriors ride. And a warrior is just someone who's a fighter. On painted ponies. And painted ponies are ponies that with spots on them. One wears a bonnet, and there's a bonnet, and that's what a real bonnet might look like, with full tail. His yellow leggings or pants have a bright green fringe. And see right there, those are what they call fringes. His breech clouts, somewhat like shorts, red. The other has a shield with yellow bands. I saw them once like this against a Cheyenne sky. And a Cheyenne sky is the sky that he saw at home. So when he, when he was at home, he looked up in the sky. And what he saw there was what he would call a Cheyenne sky. The lines across the page are thin and straight as fencing. I snipped the wire and thrust through. In his mind, he's doing that. He's not really doing this. He's just imagining this. And when it, when it says snip the wire, it means that he is cutting the fence in his mind and thrusting through, which means he's going through. And in my mind, the warriors and I ride side by side across the gold, golden plain. And the golden plain are just the yellow fields. Shy Anigan, which means he's back to being Cheyenne. He doesn't have to be treated like he's something's wrong with being Cheyenne. 